You're back here with Darren Morse, uh, filling in for Jay McNally here on the American Dream Talk Show. Wham 1600 out of Ann Arbor. We have on the line with us uh, a man for whom I have the highest respect, the publisher of the imaginativeconservative.org, uh, perhaps one of the greatest blogs out there. And uh, folks, if you're if you're the uh, type of person who wants to dig deeper into the roots of conservatism, that is a great place to start. This is uh, well, my, my favorite blog, and not just because he publishes my columns there. But, Winston, we've got, we've got about a dozen minutes left here uh, before the end of the hour. How about we go through this list of uh, questions, kind of like a lightning round of conservatism. What do you think? I think we can do that. I never answered your earlier question on, yeah. uh, can one uh, be wisdom wise without oh, yeah. virtue? One of the elements of wisdom is a, to be able to practically apply it, uh, and virtue is an element of that. It can't be separated, um, and that's part of the separation of the idea. We know a lot of know a lot of learned people uh, who are very knowledgeable, but they don't apply it in a wise and virtuous manner. Well, as human beings, really, the highest state for us is to, apl- to have both. That's right. You know, it's just like. Uh... Like uh, Socrates said in the symposium, that it, that that, f- that freedom is not it, nothing is really good or bad in and of itself, but it's how it's used. And so, uh, wisdom and cunningness are two different things. There's a lot of intelligent people out there that have no virtue whatsoever. So, you know, in the book uh, Rights and Duties, Russell Kirk uh, makes the point that perhaps uh, uh, the First Amendment is being violated today, and that there is a secular religion, uh, or excuse me, there is a state-sponsored religion which is atheistic, secular humanitarianism, in that, uh, that there's this non-theistic uh, atheism that is, is abolishing uh, uh, the, the freedom of religion in America. In other words, today it's become uh, not the freedom to practice religion, but it's the freedom from religion. Would you say that, uh, R- that Russell Kirk nailed it with, with that point, that today's state-sponsored religion is really an atheistic, secular humanitarianism? Yes, and of course that's one of the biggest problems that we deal with. We we want to say that uh, the liberals would like to say that the system or the political scene, the modern secular uh, uh, institutions, are faith neutral, but actually they're faith negative, um, and particularly negative they're hostile Christianity. Mm-hmm. And and the, the roots of our culture, whether one's Christian or not, one has to recognize historically the roots of our culture are from a Western heritage that also. In, uh, includes a strong uh, Judeo-Christian uh, heritage, and we have to accept that historically. Now, whether we like it or not is a different question. So, to eliminate that from our culture, to, to push it out of the public square, is to essentially eliminate part of who we are. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Now, it's it's become the the freedom of worship. Uh, not the freedom of religion. In other words, you're allowed to worship as you want as long as you keep it in your church. I'm reading Alexander Sol- Solzhenitsyn's book, The uh, Gulag Archipelago, and he quotes this Russian poet who says, uh, feel free to pray so long as only God can hear you. And that's essentially what we've got here today. Let me go to the next question. How is it, Winston, you think that Obama can be, in latest polls have shown this, that Obama's actually losing the women's vote after months of ploys and pandering and all of this uh, this nonsense that he's done to try to win over the vote through uh, through these free contraception ideas. How is it that he could possibly be losing the women's vote uh, this early in the campaign? Well, I would like to think it's because uh, women have an innate sense of virtue and wisdom, and they don't see that in his policies, and it's becoming more and more clear. I think also, so you know, many women, of course, are either working now, or if they're, even if they're not, uh, they're homemakers. They still see in their family the crunch, the, uh, the difficulty, the tension that comes in a family and, and difficult times. So for all the underemployed, uh, for all the unemployed, uh, those women see what how difficult this is and how the policies of President Obama have not done anything uh, to put us back on the right track. So yeah, they may despite not know the, the right uh, he's got this big thing where he's pandering to the new Julia, so to speak, and even if you are a woman who believes with Gloria Steinem that women need men like fish need bicycles, that doesn't mean that the, the feminist movement is going to get behind an idea that all, all women need is a big brother. So just yesterday, uh, Julie, Julie Robeson, uh, one of our contributors, put up a piece on the new Julia, 
Oh, um, that I would highly recommend. And she leads off by saying, essentially, how did men get uh, liberated from men only to become dependent on government? <laughs> um, and I, I think that's a valid question. But you're absolutely right. And Russell Kirk, I should point out, when he wrote this great book called uh, a, a Conservative's Guide to the, or excuse me, the, A Conservative Woman's, shoot, I forgot the name of the book now, I, uh, The Conservative, The Intelligent Conservative Women's it's a wonderful little book. <laughs> if you you know, if you'd have asked me the title before you started manipulating mm-hmm. it there, it's yep. the Intelligent Woman's Guide to Conservative. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Winston. I appreciate that. <laughs> I had and to of find course... it on my shelf before I could tell you that for sure. <laughs> Let me ask you the next question. Who do you think is a better green actor, Yoda or Kermit? <laughs> now that's very difficult because I'm a big fan of both. Is that right? Uh, Kermit Kermit is funnier. Um, and I've always admired his humility and how difficult it is to be green. On the other hand, Yoda seems wiser to me, and he also has the ability to put that cane down and kick butt, which I enjoy. <laughs> I look Yoda, at the difference between the these two ma- uh, these two characters. I think that uh, when I think of Yoda, I think of Confucius, the great conservative philosopher. If there ever is an Eastern philosopher that is conservative, it's Confucius. Whereas Kermit is kind of this affable... Lao Tzu type of get along with the world, kind of a, almost a pantheist type of thing. So I prefer, uh, although I think that uh, Kermit is a, is a great character, I'm a big Yoda fan. Who do you think is a better Frenchman, de Tocqueville or Montesquieu? Um, I would go with de Tocqueville, um, partially because I like his writing so much better. Montesquieu uh, is so important in talking about uh, the formation of governments and what type of government uh, institutions work and don't work depending on what stage you're in as a people. On the other hand, Tocqueville is just a much better writer, and I, I enjoy his work so much more. Oh, yeah. De- the uh, Democracy in America is a book that really helped me see my own country uh, far more deeply than perhaps I had ever seen it before. He gave us also the idea of the tyranny of the majority and democratic despotism, whereas Montesquieu gave us the idea of the separation of powers as well as checks and balances. Which do you think is uh, a better empire, the British, the Habsburg, or the Roman Empire? <laughs> wow. Well, I'm always uh, partial to the, to the British just because that's, uh, those are our roots, and, and uh, those are the people who gave us, their heritage gave us the ability to be a free republic, um, and what we had inherited from them. So on the other hand, uh, you know, you do have, I don't know, you have years of, Years of peace enforced at the end of uh, a sword. Uh, I'm going to go British on that. Yep. You know, I think I have to do that. I love the Habsburg Empire. How it's you know, and perhaps it's because it's the last empire that we we can we don't see it as clearly as we do some of these empires that have been around uh, for a lot longer or the ancient Roman Empire. Of course, the uh, the Habsburgs were uh, a, a culture that were able to 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 maintain this great hierarchy, but yet amongst this incredible amount of diverse peoples. And, I, and I've always really appreciated that. But, hey, Winston, what do you think? Who's better, Zeppelin or the Stones? I'm more a uh, either uh, Bach or George Strait uh, guy. Uh, um, so That's right. You're a text. You know, see, that's just, you were kind enough, however, I must say, to publish my uh, Ash Wednesday column where I, I, sh- I showed how Led Zeppelin's, uh, perhaps the greatest song in rock and roll, Stairway to Heaven, is actually based on T.S. Eliot's poem, Ash Wednesday. And it has this incredible Christian humanism to it. And boy, what a real treat it was to write that column. And you can check that out on Imaginative Conservative. We're talking with the publisher of that. We've got just a couple more minutes here. Winston, let me ask you, who do you think is a better economist, Hayek or Friedman? Uh, Wilhelm Rupke. (laughs) <laughs> oh, that's a great answer. Should we repeal universal suffrage, or should we return to the original electoral college? Eh, that's a bit of a trick question. We ought to do both, I guess. <laughs> uh, I'm with Cicero I, that at I a time of should. great crisis, men ought to be weighed rather than merely counted. But what are your <clears throat> thoughts on that? Well, I mean, we have a, a definitive problem here, and the voters are voting, but often quite little information. Uh, they're not being active citizens and responsible citizens. That's part of the reason. You know, we want to blame the people in Washington or our state capitals, but we're the ones who put them there. So we have to be informed, and we have to hold people accountable. That's right, Winston. Thank you so much for visiting us. You know, I'm reminded of that comment that I think it was Franklin who said that when the, when the majority of the people realize they can vote themselves the largesse of the nation's wealth, the republic is done.